Welcome back to Mean Greet, my friends. Welcome back. Today we're cooking the most easy to cook, delectable backyard pork spare ribs. I love me a good pork spare rib. I can't wait to bring this video to you. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. We got a beautiful slab. It's almost a whole spare. Um, sometimes they'll have a chime bone up top here that you'll cut off, but Sam's Club, where I bought these ribs, they did me a solid and they knocked it off for me. So we could do this a lot of different ways, guys. I wanna bring you a take on a pork spare rib that's somewhere in between restaurant style, backyard style, with a little bit of competition. I'll show you what I mean later, stick around. I'm gonna get these bad boys trimmed, seasoned up. I'll bring you along through the whole thing. Let's start on the back side. Again, this isn't a super detailed how-to trim. There's enough of those on YouTube. So just follow along, watch what I do. We're gonna knock off this little skirt here. You don't need it, you don't want it. Knock it off. Doesn't have to be pretty. Just get her gone. I know there's a big, there's a big conversation. Do we keep the membrane? Do we not keep the membrane? Here's what I do. When I'm cooking on my 500 gallon smoker, I keep my membrane on. I don't even score it. You don't need to score it. There's enough convection to cook it, okay? So it's, it's edible. When I'm cooking on my Oklahoma Joe, which is a much smaller, cheaper, less efficient smoker, I do like to take the membrane off. The convection in that bad boy is just not, it's not enough. So um, if you're not cooking on a highly convective uh, pit, I would advise taking the membrane off. But hey, you do what you wanna do. You won't cause any havoc, don't you worry. Now to round out the trim on these spare ribs, there's a couple things I like to do. So all this meat at the end is gonna need to go. You can feel it and there's some cartilage in there. And I like to kind of get in here and find a real bone. Sadly, a real bone doesn't start till somewhere up in here. So we'll lose most of this. So I'm just going to feel this guy. And I'm taking that off. Yeah, you could save it. You could throw it on the smoker. You can make a little snack, whatever you want to do. As far as this side is concerned, I, uh, I want to knock this cartilage out. I don't want that there. And then I'm going to cut these uh, pretty much a St. Louis style cut. So I'll, I'll kind of take this down to the bone. So what I like to do is you can visually see somewhere in around the third or fourth bone somewhere in here, the bone is higher. It's higher up on the rack. So I like to get in there, find the highest bone, which is probably this guy. And then I'm just going to come in right on top of it and take that down. This is what you would use here, I'll show you, for rib tips. Um, all that meat there up top you can use for rib tips. You can section it off, season it, throw it on your pit, cook it down. I won't be doing that today, but you do have that option. We got that backside done, I'm feeling good. Left the membrane on, like I said, it'll cook down in the pit. Flip this slab over and I just wanna check the top. Typically there's a pocket of fat that builds up right here when you get the rib out of the cryovac. And sometimes you'll need to take it out. You'll need to cut it out. Mine doesn't really have that. I do have this kind of fleshy piece of meat up top. It probably would burn. It's really not that big of a deal for this application. Because remember, this is going to be a easy to eat backyard slab of ribs. So we're not too, too worried about it. And that my friends is a beautifully trimmed slab of pork spare ribs. I got my binder. Binder is comprised of one part mustard, one part Worcestershire. I think that's what's in here. Will it kill you to not have one? No. If you have it on hand, use it. Not a lot, just a little bit, just a little bit. All right, we're gonna get this side seasoned up. Let's talk seasonings, okay? Now, there is a million and one different ways to season pork ribs. You can go a lot of different routes. Today, what I wanna do is I wanna cook a slab of ribs that you could literally eat the entire slab and not feel sick, right? We've all cooked, I'm sure we've all done it. Super heavy, crazy butter, margarine, or brown sugar, honey. We put it in the foil, we cook it up, and it's just, it's like a candied rib. We've all done that. They're good, but you just can't eat a bunch of them. The way that I do that is by seasoning my ribs very simplistically with salt, pepper, plus, meaning, um, Salt coming from seasoning salt, but the plus is that there's a little bit of garlic, a little bit of onion powder, a little bit of celery seed inside of um, Lowry. So uh, salt, pepper plus, and we use the smoke for the flavor. 
Then I do a little something at the end that's a nice little homage to, I think that's a word, homage to uh, my competition, candied rib kind of thing. Again, I'll show you at the end. First, I like to hit it with the Mortons. Guys, the Mortons is the secret. It's the secret for some good uh, spare ribs. I kind of use it like an AP seasoning, an all-purpose seasoning, like I said. It's got kind of everything in it. You don't have to go real, real liberal, but just give it a nice dusting. And it's just, it's really a, it's really a pretty AP seasoning. I like the look of it. I like the taste. I love the celery seed that's on the inside. And uh, it's a good little touch. Again, Lowry's, we all know Lowry's. Don't go super heavy. Just give it a nice little dust, nice little coat. This bottom side, um, when, you're, when you're biting the rib, I feel like a lot of people kind of, I don't know if it's underlooked, but they don't really give that bottom side the attention that it deserves, guys. When you're, when you're taking that first bite, your tongue's actually hitting the bottom of the rib first before your teeth and everything else. So you wanna make sure that um, you season the bottom as though it's the first bite of barbecue that's going in your mouth. And then pepper. Press it in. And I'll top it off with a little bit of this Killer Hogs, the barbecue rub. If you've watched any of my other videos, guys, you know that I love Killer Hogs on pork. I think it's the best color in barbecue. That's my personal opinion. And so I love to hit it with some Killer Hogs, the barbecue rub. Check that out. That is a bottom, perfectly seasoned slab of ribs. Flip it over. We're running the same play up top. I've made this mistake in the past when I've cooked pork ribs and um, it's the following. I've put too much salt on my ribs and then let them sit too long. I let them rest too long. I, I like to go a little lighter on the, the salt. Don't overdo the salt. And then um, please, please, please use 16 mesh ground black pepper if you can on top of your ribs. What's gonna give you the bark that you need, because remember we, we don't want this seasoning to just sit on top of the rib. We actually want the rib to absorb the seasoning. That's what's gonna set our bark. And, and the most important thing you can do to ensure a proper bark is to put a good uh, ground 16 mesh black pepper. I use Fiesta. I've used all kinds of peppers. I really like Fiesta. So, um, you know, I'm not saying you need to overdo the pepper, but you do wanna get a little liberal coat of pepper because that's what's gonna give us that beautiful bark. If you don't do that, we've, we've all made the mistake, but if you don't do that, if you overdo the salt and underdo the, underdo the pepper, um, you will cook a kind of hammy type pork. We don't want this to turn out and feel and taste like ham. And, uh, and so it's, it's very easy to do that when you over salt it and under pepper it. That should be enough. That'll give us the bite that we want, a little kick in the background, and that's gonna set a beautiful bark. Top it off with, again, Malcolm Reed's The Barbecue Rub. Go very liberal. Um, he did not overdo the seasonings inside of this blend. It's very balanced. Um, so I, I go very liberal on top. Well, liberal for me. I don't know what you consider liberal. I get a nice, nice coat. Shake it off and then pat it in. Don't rub it, please do not rub it. Pat it in. There you have it, folks. That is a beautifully seasoned slab of pork ribs. What a beautiful set of ribs, perfectly seasoned. These are going to taste amazing, I promise you. We're gonna lay some post oak on them lay the smoke on them, it's gonna be delicious. These have set for about 15 minutes. Again, I, go, I don't go too long. They set about 15 minutes, they sweat just a little bit. That seasoning has adhered just the right amount. It's time to go on the pit. The only thing I'm worried about for the first four to five hours of the cook is the color of the meat. Don't worry about internal temperature. Don't worry about any of that. The only priority while we're cooking our ribs uh, in the beginning is the color. We're looking for a dark, deep mahogany first. Second, we're looking for a proper bark. We want to make sure that all that is solidified before it goes into the foil. So I'm going to let these roll for the first hour somewhere around 225. That's the pit temperature. 
as I'm laying the smoke. I'm going heavy smoke in the beginning, and then I'm gonna start to clean my fire up, uh, meaning get open up my logs, get some airflow going, um, in preparation for the second half of the cook where we're really gonna cook these down inside of the foil. So 225 for the first hour, slowly gonna start to bring that up somewhere around 275, I want these to roll. And then once I get the color, once I get the bark, they're going in the foil. Let's get them on the pit, I'll see you over there. Oh yeah, my pride and joy right here, my pride and joy. No real science, I'm just gonna put the bone side, so cartilage side, if you will, bone side. I'm gonna face my bone side towards the fire. And then something I like to do is just push them together, just make sure they're as tight as possible. That ensures for a nice plumpy plump rib. That's it. Smokestacks closed about halfway. Fire's rocking and rolling at 225. I'm gonna let it sit there for about an hour. The reason I have the smokestack closed is because I want that smoke, the smoke is hot and heavy right now. I want that smoke to hit my ribs to get that bark going and get that color going. And then like I said earlier, I'm gonna start to open up my logs, get some more airflow into my fire and run a little bit of a cleaner fire after about the 45 minute to one hour mark as I climb my temps up to 275. We'll roll from there after the first hour We'll roll 275 the whole way through. I am not worried about time. I could care less about how long these ribs are on the pit. We're cooking them until they're done. And the way we know they're done is by feel and color. My friends, we gotta stop relying on the thermometers. Throw your thermometer out on this one. You're going off feel. We're, we're, we're going off feel. All right, we'll check back. Back at the pit, we're about an hour and a half in, and it's time to check the ribs for the first time. I'm looking for color, I'm looking for my bark formation. I, uh, I want the surface to begin to dry itself out because I'm gonna spritz. I have apple cider vinegar in here, a little bit of water, 50-50 mix, so uh, let's check it out. We're looking good, looking good. We won't waste much time. I just wanna hit this with some cider vinegar. Nice little mist right over the top. Look at that, it just livens it up, gives it some moisture. That's what you want, folks. Now, if you can see, we're starting to get just a little bit of cracking right here. It's not that big of a deal, but that's just, that just tells you, the ribs are telling you that they're going a little bit too long without getting uh, spritzed. So I'll just start to check back probably every 30 minutes or so for the next couple hours, just to make sure that we're not getting splitting and cracking across the board, but we are perfectly fine. I love the way these look. We'll close her back down. We'll check back in about 30 minutes. My temp's climbing its way back up to 275. I'm gonna hang out around 275 to 300, pretty much for the duration of this cook. Um, I love cooking around 275, 300. I just, I know my cooking unit, you guys will have to adjust accordingly. I can tell you this though, uh, spare ribs, pork ribs, they are ex they're an extremely forgiving cut of meat. So if your temps are fluctuating, um, don't worry about it, don't stress, just try to keep temps in the wheelhouse of somewhere between 250 to 300 and you will be a-okay. I'm gonna let these ribs roll for another 30, 45 minutes. We'll check back, like I said, give them another spritz. And uh, I wanna show you that beautiful mahogany bark. I love it, I love a good bark. We'll see you in a little bit. Ribs are just about ready to go into the foil for the wrap for the second half of the cook. And uh, I told you at the beginning of the video I was gonna show you something special, so here we are. I'm going to make um, a, I don't know what I call it, a slurry, if you will, and uh, it tastes delicious. This is how I hit my ribs. This is how I cook my ribs. Um, I hit them with this sauce that I'm about to show you. I used to make a very candied kind of competition-esque style rib with a bunch of brown sugar and butter and all the goodness. I cooked ribs like that for many years. However, over the years, I've kind of transitioned into an easier to eat uh, style of rib, and this is it. It's a, it's a very simple concoction that I do. It gives a beautiful color on the ribs. It gives it just a nice kind of sweet heat touch of sauce, not too much, just enough. And uh, it's pretty simple. There's no real measurements here, but I got um, about a stick of butter and I made some simple syrup. All it is is equal parts water to granulated sugar, so white sugar, equal parts, put it in a pot, dissolve the sugar down, 
and you have some simple syrup, very delicious. I have some Womp Sauce by Meat Mitch. I have some Blues Hogs Original. Again, no real measurements here, but the idea is we want to combine kind of the barbecue sauce with the butter and give it a little sweet touch of simple syrup, and then we'll cut it with some apple cider vinegar to give us our liquid. And then once it's all mixed up, we hit the top of our ribs just like so. I'll show you in a second. So Meat Mitch, I use uh, just a little bit. I actually get most of the barbecue sauce from the Blues Hogs. So I go just about right there, just a little bit. It's got a little kick to it. It's got a little spice, so I don't want to overdo it. And then this, I go pretty heavy. I almost do this entire jar. Once you make this concoction, you can of course save this in your refrigerator. So uh, don't worry about over making a batch because you can just save it. We'll give a little butter in the top right here. We'll call it about a half a stick for now. And then simple syrup to taste. So we'll just add just a little bit for starters. We'll taste it, we'll see where it's at. Guys, this sauce, this, this right here, this little concoction, I've done this on hundreds and hundreds of slabs of ribs and it is delicious. It's a crowd favorite. It's just enough to allow people at a backyard barbecue to eat six, seven, eight, nine, nine ribs and not feel sick. And if you're cooking ribs in addition to other meat, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't steal the show. That's it right there, guys. Let me taste this and I'm gonna cut it with some, some cider vinegar. Dang, that's good. Here we go. If you overdo the cider vinegar, meaning it's too vinegary, which is possible, you can overdo it. If you do that, just put some water in there. It'll mellow it out, don't worry. Give that the old mixy mix. Voila. Let's give it one more taste, make sure that we're we're getting exactly what we want. We're making a mess. A little bit more simple syrup. That should do it, guys. Let's go to the pit, let's sauce them down, and then let's get ready to throw them in the foil around this cookout. We're almost there. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. Give it a little saucy sauce, just like so. Don't be afraid to hit it, guys. Gosh, look at that. We'll hit, we'll hit his little brother right here. Look at that beautiful color. I mean, you really cannot beat a rib that looks that dang good. Nice, pretty, mahogany, it's a little tint of cherry red. You can't beat that slurry, guys. I'm telling you, you gotta try it. We're gonna leave it on for about 10 or 15 minutes or so, and then we're gonna get in the foil. The ribs have been on officially, a little over four hours. It's time to pull them out, throw them in the foil, and cook them down till they're perfectly tender. Let's check them out. Oh my goodness. I mean, this is the color that we chase in barbecue. This is the color right here. When you're talking pork spare ribs, you want that dark, rich, deep mahogany. I told you guys, I told you if, you, if you just follow my lead, I'll lead you guys to barbecue greatness. This is good stuff. Take them off. Look at that. Oh yeah. Right now I'm not worried about um, how pliable and tender they are. That's not my concern right now because the way that I do ribs, I set my bark, my color, all that good stuff first, and then I let the foil do its thing. So I let the foil um, t tenderize and cook the ribs down to get them where I want texture wise. So texture for me happens inside the foil, but again, I'll walk you through it. We'll check back. We're in the home stretch, my friends. Time to get our pork spare ribs in the foil. We'll get them nice and tender. We'll finish them out. This is my go-to way to finish my ribs off, this right here. 
I take the concoction we made earlier. I don't have a name for it, but I should coin this somehow, the slurry. You take the slurry and uh, you do this really complex, super fancy artistry here, and that's it. Take this beautiful rib, you lay it meat side down in our slurry, and then you hit the top with just a little bit. Pat it in, don't rub it, don't rub it, because you can knock off the seasoning. I have two pieces of heavy duty foil. Now, when you wrap these, you gotta wrap with the end in mind, meaning don't package this thing up like you're gonna ship it across the country. You wanna wrap it in a way that will allow you to check your ribs through the next uh, half of the cook. So I just like to go over the top on either sides, like so. And that is a perfectly packaged spare rib. Remember I said wrap with the end in mind because um, when, we're checking it, when we're checking the ribs for doneness here in an hour or so, a couple hours, you just wanna be able to pop it open, lift it up and get your hand in there to feel it. That's all you need to do, so. Don't wrap it like a Christmas present. We will be opening this soon. No special science here. Get these back on the pit. If, uh, if you're on a backyard smoker or a smaller smoker where it's a little bit more difficult to manage fires, at this point in time, it's perfectly okay to throw it in your oven. I'd put it in the oven somewhere around 275. Um, I suspect these have no more than two hours left, which would make the, co the total cook time somewhere in the wheelhouse of six hours. So um, assuming we have about two hours max left, I'm gonna check these every 30 minutes. It's uh, once you put meat inside a foil at 275 plus degrees, the meat can really get away from you. The last thing we wanna do is overcook these and then they're just, they're literally falling off the bone. That's not enjoyable. So the, there's, a, there's a, a perfect balance between very tender and has just enough bite to give us what we're looking for. So I'm gonna check about every 20 to 30 minutes for doneness, and uh, next time I see you, we'll be at the chopping block slicing these bad boys up for a taste test. We'll see you soon. The time has arrived. It is the most important moment of the day. We got some ribs that are finished. I'm extremely excited. I love barbecue so much, and this is one of my favorite, this is one of my favorite cuts of meat. I've been cooking ribs since day one. I'm really excited to break this open. Let me show you guys first um, kind of how I approach making sure to, to the best of my ability that ribs are finished. Remember I told you, wrap your ribs with the end in mind, meaning uh, when these are on the pit, you're able to open it up pop this open and I have direct access to the bottom of this slab of ribs. So um, I'll show you. When the ribs are in the pit, you can pick it up and take it and physically feel. It's so malleable. Uh, there's, there's no shadow of a doubt that these are done. And if you're, if you're really questioning, if you don't know about the feel, you can pop it open and then you can take a look and see that the bones are showing, which is a good sign. It's not the ultimate sign, it's not the end all be all. However, if you take somewhere around the middle two bones and you start to move them like this, you can see that minimal pressure and that wants to break away. It's flexible, it's malleable, and if I wanted to, I could twist out that rib. I won't. Um, so yeah, that, that's, a, that's about the best that you can do to figure out short of sticking a thermometer, which I just don't advise guys. Uh, we, we gotta put the thermometers aside and we gotta start trusting our feel, our eyes. Um, so without further ado, let's just open these up. <laughs> guys, 
What is there to even say? There is nothing to say. It's just a beautiful slab of ribs. Look at our, uh, our bark is set. That pepper is not washing out. We got a little bone protrusion. Can't beat it. Enough talking. Let's see what these things are talking about. Slicing, sometimes it can be a headache. If you run into issues, you can turn it up vertically and then just, just run your knife down the bone like so. What a beautiful, beautiful thing. <laughs> Excited. Here we go. Unbelievable. God. It's so good. You, you have to do it this way. We got the pepper, the whole thing. I don't even want to explain it because it's just so good. You just have to try it yourself. It comes right off the bone. It has some structural integrity. It's not falling all over the place. It's juicy, it's moist, it's savory. My cavities aren't jumping out right now. My teeth don't hurt. You can eat these. I can eat this whole slab. I will eat this whole slab. Let me get one more bite, just so you guys know it's, it's really legitimate and then I will uh, ask you to subscribe. Stand by. That's it, guys. Three items. Like, comment, nope. Like, comment, subscribe. Please, for the love of God, I will beg you. Your subscriptions mean everything for this channel. Thank you, thank you. Meet and greet, as always, over and out. That's actually really good.